We're here pitch sides. Manchester United have lost to Real Madrid 2-0. Sorry about the noise in the background. The blowers are on the pitch, but I mean, they've let us come out and stand actually on the pitch. I can give you a bit of a report. I can see why Scott had so many had a sore knee. It's like a bleeding sponge. It's, I don't know what it is. It don't feel like grass at all, but... Football fanatics, get ready. The United Stand pre-season tour is here. Powered by One Football, the ultimate app for live scores, transfers, and match stats. Download now. No one gets you closer. This is what these stadiums are like. The NFL stadiums, the tour, everything that's involved in this sort of thing. It's, it's like it's not. The pitches really aren't that good. And you know what? We're starting to get a few injuries. I'm starting to worry right now because uh, at one point tonight, I'm thinking we're losing two more central midfielders. Luckily enough, we're in the mix zone before there. We've seen Scott McTominay walk past. Uh, I asked him if his knee was OK. He said he's fine. He was getting treatment right at the end there. And yeah, you can laugh what you want, but right now Manchester United needs Scott McTominay because we haven't got anyone else. So that was a little bit of good news at the end. Unfortunately for Kobe Mainu, we did see him walk through the mix zone as well. And in the mix zone there, he was walking through with a protective boot on his foot. He looks a bit dejected, a bit disappointed, as you would be. Biggest game of his career, 72,000 people playing one of the best midfields in world football and he lasted three minutes for a innocuous challenge that wasn't even his challenge. It's the most rotten look you could ever wish upon anyone. You wouldn't wish it upon your worst enemy for that to happen, but unfortunately it did to Kobe Mainu. Absolutely gutted for the lad. And you could see it on his face when he walked through there. It really is unfortunate for him, but we've got the best staff. Hopefully we can get him fit and ready for the season. I don't know if he'll play any more part of pre-season, though, unfortunately. All we can hope for now is young and he gets a speedy recovery. But, yeah, that added two, which pretty much was a disappointing night for United because at the start, it looked good. We looked confident on the ball. That injury happened, and then in the midst of trying to get a substitute on the pitch, Real Madrid punted one over the top. Bellingham timed his run superbly, and he lofted it beautifully over Onana. Uh, I've just got to put a make it's the first time i've watched jude bellingham play live worth every penny the man is just ridiculously good that midfield of real madrid's is just on a different scale altogether united's midfield is very good and we we were combative we did challenge real madrid we put up a good fight it wasn't a 2-0 game i thought united probably deserved a draw out of the game but they have got that quality and cutting edge where we don't that was the difference jude bellingham camavinga Absolutely outstanding. And then Vinicius Jr., oh my God, what a player. To watch them up close and personal is a different level and you just understand how good they are. They set traps all over the pitch. Incredibly intelligent players and United struggled with them, handling them. We did well to battle and hold them out and cause our own threat. We had some positive performances there tonight. I thought Mason Mount was tenacious. I thought Garnaccio was brave and really scared Real Madrid's defence. I thought Leitcher and Varane dealt quite well with what was coming their way. I thought Anana was brilliant. And Anana had more touches outside his box in a pre-season friendly than David De Gea had in 12 years at the football club. Absolutely loving what's to come from him. He couldn't do anything with the goals. They're just what they were. Two very, very good finishes. Like I said, very clinical Real Madrid. That was the difference tonight. They have got that cutting edge where we don't. We are desperately missing a number nine. We're not going to have a number nine on this tour. Jaden Sancho isn't our number nine. The quality opposition tonight stood out, and yeah, he may have looked decent against Arsenal, and he, he, he did well from a mistake with Gabriel in that game, and he took his goal well. But honestly, right now I'm looking at Jaden Sancho. He came on in the second half there. It didn't happen for him. It didn't happen for him. Uh, not in the number nine position. I just don't like him there. I'm going to be honest. I think he's better out on the right-hand side. I think that's where he has to fight for his position there. If he can't get in, if he can't get in the team on that right-hand side for me, and I understand what Ten Hag is doing, I really do. He's trying to make the most of what he's got because his hands are tied and we haven't got enough funds to bring in the players that he needs. I understand it, but Jaden Sancho belongs on the right wing. He does, in my opinion, anyway. I'd like to know what you think, guys, with Jaden Sancho. Drop your comments in below. Let me know where his best position is because I'm scratching my head at the moment. Other, other than right wing. I just don't want to see him anywhere. Yeah, you're going to say, well, he's opposition there. Well, that's tough. It's Manchester United. You have to fight for your position. You take your opportunity when you come in. 
if someone's there in way of you in that position, you've got to make sure you perform when you come on the pitch and make the most of it. Otherwise, it's pointless being here at United. Look at Real Madrid. Do you know what I mean? You look at their, look at their midfield. They've got Tony Kroos on the bench. Valverde couldn't even get in the starting lineup. World class international players. But they know what they've got to do. They know they're at a big club. United need to start acting like a big club. And I think Ten Hag is the right man for this. <clears throat> if you're not happy to fight for your position, then you're not, you're not going to be a Man United player. It's as simple as that. Take your opportunity when it comes to it. This is where I have sometimes defended Aaron Maguire because he thinks he should be fighting for his position at United. The head is right. And maybe with his captaincy off him, He's got, a, he's got a better chat. Well, he's not really, because I'm, I'm, I'm clutching at straws. All I'm saying is Maguire thinks he should be in that position and he wants to stay and fight for it. Like, yeah, it's the right attitude in a way, but that decision needs to be taken away from him more, I would say. Jadon Sancho has got bundles of class. We're just not seeing it enough. I just wish Ten Hag would play him on the right. Say, like, Jadon... That's where you made your name as a footballer and why you're up in lights and why Manchester United paid you all that money and why we spent that money and paid Dortmund that fee for you on the right-hand side. Crossing, assists, goals at Dortmund. He needs to be on the right-hand side. I don't see him fitting anywhere else. Hopefully we can get Hoyland done and dusted when we get back next week from the tour and look forward to the start of the season because we need a striker. Again, last season, we weren't scoring enough goals. I think it was the worst in the top eight for goals scored. And we look at the pre-season this so far. Four games for United, five goals. It ain't good enough. It really isn't. We need more goals. We should be scoring tens by this time right now. <coughs> at least two goals a game. That's what needs to be. That's a minimum for United. Otherwise, that pressure is going to keep on coming on the defence. And big games like this, when it's tight, and you haven't put your chances away because we did have a couple of chances. A couple over the bar from Garnacho, uh, Anthony in the second half in particular. Mason Mount was unlucky with a couple that he just couldn't quite get his foot to. Rashford should have done better. He almost scored in the first half going in down the right-hand side of the box. That was very unlucky after a great move from United. But we are not clinical enough. That is, that is one thing that United are not because some of the passing movement today was outstanding from United. We asked Brandon Williams in the uh, mix zone, then we interviewed him and said, what were, I asked him what was Ten Hag's message. He said, we'll go back, we'll watch the game back, we'll analyse it. It, was, it wasn't all downbeat. We know where we lost the game. We just lost to a good, good team with two quality goals. One of them was an old red kick, for God's sake. First time off a cross. You can't defend that. It's just pure quality. Sometimes you hold your hand up. But what you can do about that is take your chances when they come and maybe it turns into a 2-1 or 2-2 game and it's not looking like the easy walk in the park on paper when everyone wakes up early in the morning, that that was for Real Madrid, because it wasn't that. Carlo Ancelotti will know he was in a the game there today. We give, a, we give as good as we got, but they finished their dinner, we didn't. That was the only difference. Bruno Fernandes on the right, like I just said, Jadon Sancho should be there. Anthony should be there. Bruno should have been, should be in the middle. He's more, he's more effective there. He was on the peripheral of the game all the way through the first half. He then moved into the middle and literally got hold of the ball. And I think he probably doubled his touches from the first half because he was in the right position. He needs to be in the middle dictating. It's as simple as that. I do like the look of the Casemiro, Mount and Bruno all playing though. It is looking tasty and time will definitely work in our favour on that one. I think them three, will, they will complement each other very, very well. Mason Mount, he won't get much praise. And I got a lot of stick the other day for saying he was stand out. My standout is maybe different to everyone else's. I've seen the tenacious Mason Mount here today, tackling, harassing, pressing, and just making Madrid pass the ball a lot quicker than what they wanted to for a pre-season game. He looks sharp, he looks ready. I'm really looking forward to seeing him this season. He plays that clever ball. And after a few games and a bit of interchange and getting used to his teammates, Mason Mount will fit into this team and he'll fit in our system. And I know, I love him already. Brilliant. Two fantastic signings, in my opinion, there right now. I think Mason Mount, I was unsure whether he was the right midfielder. I mean, you could have got Bellingham. He would have been a better player, but, I mean, we were never at the table. Ten Hag wanted Mason Mount. The club got him. He wanted an hour, the club got him. Ireland will be next, and then we're hearing there's going to be one more player, which is probably the midfielder and Amrabat.
That for me is more than enough to comfortably sit in top four, maybe close the gap on Manchester City and Arsenal, maybe try and squeeze a second place. But my God, we need to be clinical in front of goal. Last season, it destroyed us. It was why we only finished where we did with that amount of goals. Get the striker in, and Hoyland isn't the answer on his own. I talked to Tony Martial just walking past before. Shout, Tony, we need you in the team. If you're not going anywhere, we need you back. We need strikers, we need people that can hold that ball up and be different. It's painful watching it sometimes because we're so good. And we just haven't got that killer instinct on the end of it. That's all it is, unfortunately. But time will tell. Get this transfer window done, make the most of it. And hopefully what we're seeing here in the build-up play and everything that is good, we'll get, we'll get his reward. That's what we need. Anyway, guys, that's me summing up here. That is Houston over and out. Back to San Diego now for an open training session this weekend before we head to Las Vegas for the last game of this US tour. That is it, guys. Let me know what you thought of the game. If you did stay up and watch it, let me know who your man of the match was. Was there anyone there who stood up and was counted there tonight for Ten Hag? Was it just a case that Real Madrid were just that little bit better and have got better players? That's the level we're up against in the Champions League this season. I'll suck it and see. This is where we are right now. Cheers for watching, everyone. Like, share and subscribe to the United Stand. I will see you back in San Diego. Stay classy.